Good morning everyone. I am Crystal Kanoy and my partner is Mary Claire Shalana and today we are going to tackle the creative process versus artistic process. And also we are going to discuss on how to promote creativity in the classroom and the strategies for ideation or adaptation and how to look for inspirations and the last one that we are going to tackle is how limitation fosters creativity so today let us um, differentiate the creative process and artistic process so that we can um, deepen our understanding about these two processes so in most cases creativity is best practice when solving problems in a tight situation People are often forced to think outside the box. So being resourceful is one way to be creative. So most people showcase of creativity is when there is a need to find novel solutions to novel problems. So the creative and artistic processes may be distinct from each other in a way that creative process does not always result um, to artistic creation. And productive work in the arts does not necessarily involve creativity in terms of developing original ideas. And that is according to Botelia Sinasne Bobart in 2018. So the creative process, as defined by Bobart in 2001, is a succession of thoughts and actions that leads to original appropriate productions so the keyword here is original concepts and ideas so something that the student was able to come up on his or her own so the next is the artistic process so the artistic process is mainly production of art such as painting by copying from a photograph so waving by following a pattern or creating thousand paper cranes which involves craftsmanship and skills but does not involve creating new ideas so creative process it is the evolution of idea into its form through progression of thoughts and action so basically it means that it is the stages of making your original art through the ideas or creative thinking you've got from the inspiration you have from other people or it may be a phenomenon that happened. So we expect in creative process a result from your ideas. So we, we are going to expect that there is um, an, an art, yes. So it is the way ideas, art or creative thinking comes about. So in creative process, it has five stages. So before we talk about the five stages, these are some of the examples. So we already know what is this. So this is the Spolarium by Juan Luna, by which he he painted it during the um, during the Spanish time, the reality about the Spanish time. And the next is the most known Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. So basically we do not know what is the inspiration of Leonardo da Vinci behind that um, painting. So getting to know what is creative process, we are going to know the five stages of creative process. The first stage of um, creative process is the preparation stage. So it is the discovering problems and directing attention to something of interest. So we cannot create art if it doesn't interest us. Yes, that is very true because we cannot create something basically if we are not curious about that thing or if it doesn't inspire us. So it may be we can create something from a phenomenal happened in our society or basing from our own experience. So these are some sample tasks that can help us to um, get some inspiration during the preparation stage show. So by showing video clips of other artists, we can get some um, inspiration or ideas that can help us to do our own art. So next is 
outdoor or museum or nature trips. So, yes, as I have said a while ago, um, it is very important to watch also or to observe what had happened in our society. Maybe we can get some aspirations from that or we can portray something that can, can reflect in your art. So the second stage is the incubation stage. It is when you have finished actively thinking about your idea, it is where you let it go. So letting the mind rest and get soaked in ideas while being distracted of other things. So yes, because if you keep thinking of what is your idea, then you would be stuck in it. Then you can think of an, any idea that could help you. It's because you get stuck on that idea. So you need to, you need to let it go of that of that first and get distracted by other things because your mind can creatively think of what is maybe best for your art so these are the sample tasks that may be beneficial in during incubation stage so first is you need to let it pass or you need to let it go so do other tasks that don't think about it too much yes because as i have said it can it can stuck you with that and you cannot think of something maybe different from your um previous ideas and last is you can play games or watch videos you mostly like and do some storytelling so you need to um let it go that first because if we take rest from that um, idea, maybe there may be a great idea that comes next. So, so illumination stage. So illumination stage is, um, it is the aha moment. So ideas move to the conscious thinking by an instant flash carried by force. So it is when you suddenly think of an idea out of the blue or unconsciously because Getting freeze from the incubation stage or letting go from the incubation stage, a certain idea may come during this illumination stage. So just like a bulb, bulb that um, that being lightened, it will suddenly spark in your head and can help you. So there may be a possibility of thinking of how you should do your art goes or how it would look like or comes as a result. So the next stage is the verification stage. So it is the choosing of idea what is best or what is not best for your art. So it is where the divergent, the divergent thinking comes into play. So it is the balancing of things if it is work or not. So yes, it is very, um, very important to to verify our ideas to um, to other people maybe or to some experts. It's because getting verified, we can get some um, comments that could help us, yes? So these are the sample tests that could help you. So select materials and techniques that works best for your art. So ask your peers, as I have said a while ago, and teacher for clarification and validation of idea. So make a specific plan of how you should complete it. So asking your peers or your teacher for clarification of your idea is very helpful because they may have um, idea that is different from you that could be um, beneficial or essential in your art. Yes, yeah, so it is also very important to make a plan on how you should do it. It's because getting a plan in your art is, um, it is like building something that you are sure of. So, synthesis or creation. So, basically in this last stage is, it is the making of your art. So, you are putting idea into concrete artistic output. So, you are your, when you getting verified after getting verified then you can create your art and you can share it to the world so next how to promote creativity in the classroom so one way to practice creativity is to force yourself to think outside the box so most teachers think that creativity cannot be taught directly rather some people are just born with the talent or grow up in an environment conducive to nurturing 
So, in a space where original ideas are tolerated and encouraged, children are most likely to develop creativity as they grow, which is true. And then, inhibition in children is due mostly to over-restriction children not being allowed to express their ideas freely or without judgment, such as a restricted teacher-centered setup wherein children imitate rather than create. So, creativity entails freedom to think. That is why uh, teachers should encourage this in the early grades so students would, won't be afraid to express themselves through art. So as a future teacher, we should let our children think outside the box. We should not uh, dictate them which one to draw or we should not dictate them on what, is, what they are going to do what they are going to paint because this is our rule we are going to encourage them to express themselves through art so now we are going to proceed to the strategies for ideation what is ideation so ideation is generating new ideas so creating is quite a challenge to teach in the art room because the teacher cannot directly teach how to be creative but can they only provide opportunities to develop it so by starting um, imitating a portion from a previous so work then combine those portions to create one whole original piece so adaptation lets a student modify or alter a small aspect of the work adding own input one idea at a time. Based on Clayon on 2015, he said that one should not steal their style, rather steal the thinking behind the style. So it is very true because if we copy or we steal the style of that certain artist, then we get copyrighted. Yes, we steal the art. So we should know instead we should know the emotions or the inspirations behind that style so that in ourselves we can also learn of um, getting an inspiration that we can apply in our art so just like in the example so this is the self-portrait by ella this is acrylic and yarn on canvas using items other than what the teacher suggested is a good practice for creativity so in this case when ella had an activity in math wherein they use yarns to create rays and lines in geometry class she had an idea to apply it in her portraits as well so other example is a self-portrait from nature so the teachers should welcome and encourage questions, thoughts, insights, and curiosity in children so they develop a habit of free thinking and not just rely on the teacher on what to do next. So students can use a sketchbook, idea bank, or a journal where they put their random and even craziest ideas. So how to look for inspirations? So creative artists are great observers, right? So they see what other people do not see. That is why they are able to do what other people never thought of doing. So teach students to observe and always keep an open eye. So some examples are upcycling materials as craft items, noticing the different styles of artists, and using objects that are not likely used in normal situations. So parents also play an important role in reinforcing and extending their children's art education by taking their children to art museums, galleries, and art centers, acquiring and encouraging them to learn about art. That is according to Dobbs in 1992. So how limitation fosters creativity? So one way to be creative is to think outside the box. But the problem with other art classes is that the teachers do not provide a box. So in other words, 
when students are always given the ideal materials, tools, and methods, there would be no more room to be resourceful, solve problems, and creativity. So third world countries like the Philippines has a lot of boundaries, but being creative knows no boundaries. In fact, creativity can be more evident when there's limitation of resources. So teachers have their unique ways of being resourceful because they lack something and they are forced to think of innovative ways to solve their problems. So that ends with our report. Thank you for listening. I hope you've learned something. Bye!